The first thing we need to do before we get started is to bring the files that we need from our Web140 data folder into our Web140 root folder. I'm going to select Lesson 05, and I know I'm going to need Lesson 06 shortly, so I'll get both. Lesson 06, I'm going to right click, I'm going to select Copy, then I'm going to click in my Web140 folder, I'm going to right click, and I'm going to select Paste. And so the only time I can move folders and files around outside of Dreamweaver is before I begin working on them. As directed on page 104, I've opened the green start underscore mockup.html in my live viewing window. This is actually just a JPEG embedded in an HTML page. There's no actual coding involved at this point. This shows us what we're going to begin attempting to do in this lesson and the next lesson utilizing Bootstrap. Now we're going to talk a little about predefined layouts. Let's click File and then click New. Now as directed by the lesson, we are coming down to Starter Templates, and then we're going to click on Responsive Starters, and then we're going to click on each of these pages to get an idea what they look like. Ultimately, we're going to come back to Responsive Blog Post, and then we're going to click Create. Now we'll click File, Save, and you'll see if we don't do anything here, we're going to end up just at the root of the Web140 folder, and that is not where we want to be. It's very important to follow these instructions that I'm going to give you now very closely because it very slightly from the book because we work differently in our Web140 folder. I'm going to open my Lesson 5 folder and I'm naming this page page1.html. Now that I'm certain that I'm inside my Lesson 5 folder, that's critical, I'm going to click Save. Now you'll notice I have my page one HTML file inside my Lesson 5 folder. But if you scroll down to the bottom of your folder hierarchy, you'll see a new folder that was created called Blog Post Assets. Now, to keep our housekeeping in order, we're going to move this into the Lesson 5 folder. If you're not connected to your local root folder in Dreamweaver, what I'm getting ready to do is not going to work. So if you have a problem here, back up and make sure that you are connected to your local root folder. I can click on the folder icon and I'm going to drag it up to the Lesson 5 folder. When the Lesson 5 folder highlights with the blue border, I'm going to let go. Then I'll get a pop up asking me if I want to update file paths. And oh yes, of course I do. And now my blog post assets are inside my Lesson 5 folder. Now occasionally what happens is when you make this move for a moment everything breaks. But don't panic. You're going to save your file, close it, and open it again and it all will be well. So let's see. I was sort of hoping mine would break. But I'm going to save it here and let's say you no longer saw uh, these other areas. Well, that's okay. You're just going to close your file, exit to close it, and then double click it to open again, and they'll return immediately. Your folder structure and your file should look exactly like mine. If it does not, back up in this video and make sure that you closely followed all of my directions. If you are having issues when you move your blog post assets folder, make sure that you are connected site manage site to your web 140 root folder like that and i've confirmed that i am if you need a little more space to work in the top right corner of the interface screen you'll see a little double chevron and if you scroll over it you'll see collapse to icons we're going to click on that double chevron on the top right to give us a little more space and then now we're going to locate the scrubber. The scrubber is in the vertical divider area between our work page working interface and our icons or panel area. So you'll see that 
I've got my horizontal two-sided arrow. I'm going to left click and I can drag this scrubber smaller and larger as I choose, smaller and larger. And now at the top of the interface above the ruler, uh, above the actual page content area, I have my visual media query interface. And if the visual media query interface is not showing, I'm going to go to my vertical icon bar on the far left of the screen, and I'm going to scroll over the three horizontal lines, and that is the toggle visual media query bar icon. So I can click on that to hide or to reveal my visual media query interface. So I have a green horizontal line above my page and above the uh, ruler that's set for pixels at this point to show me where my breakpoints are. One is max width 769. The other is max width 480. Now I want to just scroll over these with my mouse. I do not want to click on them. I can just scroll over the actual numbers to see them. Now if I want to switch into one of these. Let's say I want to switch into my max width 769 pixels. I'm going to double click the horizontal space between between the 480 pixel max width indicator and the 769 max width indicator. And my screen will go into the max width 769 media query mode. Now, if I'd like to see the max width for 80 pixel media query mode, I'm going to double click in that area of the green horizontal bar at the top of my page. And that will show me, I might have said double click, I meant single click, I'm sorry. And that will show me the max width for 80 pixel. Now, if I want to go back to full size, I'm going to go to the area to the right of my scrubber bar. It's now just a large blank brown area and I'm going to double left click in that area so that my page will show me full view. And now my page has returned to the largest view, the full view. We've previewed starter pages, the scrubber bar, and the visual media query interface. It's time to get on to Bootstrap.